Welcome to another part of the ISN Statistics 1 exercise set, this time with an exercise on measures of contingency. Let's take a look at the exercise. A group of 200 men and women have been asked about their favorite TV show. As three people did not know either show, they have been excluded from the survey. The table below summarizes the results. Use a suitable normed statistic to quantify the strength of the association of the interviewee's sex and their selection of favorite show. Okay, first off, which measure of association would we need here? Obviously, gender as well as the choice of a favorite show, they are both normally scaled variables, so the only thing which we can use is either the chi squared test or statistic or something based on this statistic. As we also have the information or the task here, use a normed statistic should be something like the um, contingency coefficient or its corrected version. Better than directly go for the corrected contingency coefficient. However, we need first to get the chi squared statistic and for this, well, we will start working with our table. What are we going to do first? First off, we copy the table and then add one row and one column where we can calculate the marginal frequencies. Marginal frequency basically means we take the sum of each column and the sum of each row. We note them, for example here for males we have 84 males, we have 113 females, we have 72 people who mention Lindenstrasse and we have 125 people who mention Game of Thrones. If we summarize all of them we see we have 197, and that's the 197 observations or interviews which were mentioned in the exercise description. So in the next step, we need those marginal frequencies because in the next step, we are going to calculate the expected frequencies using the following formula. For this, we copy the table we constructed before, contingency table, but we only copy the marginal frequencies because we will need them to actually do the calculations and get the expected frequencies. What does the formula for the expected frequency means? Well, for each cell, each of the four blank cells we have here, we're going to multiply the corresponding marginal frequency according to the row and the according marginal frequency for the column with each other and divide this by the overall amount of observations. So if we consider Lindenstrasse and male, we multiply 72 with 84 and divide by 197 giving us here an approximate value of 30.7. We do the same thing for Male and Game of Thrones. We get 53.3 by multiplying 84, 125 and dividing by 197. Then for Female and Lindenstrasse we have 72 times 113 divided by 197 giving us a value of 41.3. And the final value for female in Game of Thrones, here we multiply 113 with 125 divided by 197, giving us a value of 71.7. .7. And we will need those expected frequency again for the next step, because in the next step we are going to calculate the chi squared statistic and for this we are going basically to compare and scale the actual and the expected frequencies. So here we summarize them in one comprehensive table. And what we are going to do with the chi squared statistic, that's filling in this formula. And this formula basically says, take the expected value, subtract the actual value. So for us, take for male and Lindenstrasse, take the 30.7 minus 21, the results to the power of 2 and divided by the expected value, so divided by 30.7. We do this for all four cells we have, so we get the following results, so we see the next one actually is for female in Lindenstrasse, 
here we have an expected value of 41.3 so we go 41.3 minus actual value 51 in parentheses to the power of 2 divided by expected value of 41.3 as I said we do this for all four cells and this is also one way to control whether you missed something. If you have four cells, you need four terms to calculate the chi-squared statistic. If you have seven, or not seven, that's not so realistic, but if you have six or ten different um, cells, or ten different expected frequencies, you will also get ten different terms for the chi-squared statistic. So that's a good way to control, do I actually miss something? Well, we have our results here, so we enter them into the calculator, giving us a final result of 8.4206. This is the chi-squared statistic, but as we, as we mentioned during the exercise task, this won't suffice the part where it says normalized or standardized statistic. So we need to get from the chi-squared statistic to the corrected contingency coefficient. For this, or doing this, will mean we will correct for the size of the contingency table and we will con uh, correct for the number of observations. Let's tackle the last one first. So let's go over and get the contingency coefficient. Contingency coefficient k, which takes care of the amount of observations. Why is this important? Well, if we have a lot of observations, there's more potential for larger discrepancies. So it could be that with more observations, actual values and expected values diverge quite more than they would have if I only had like very few observations. So we need to con control in some way for the number of observations. And we do this by not using the sheet squared statistic as given here, but transforming this into the contingency coefficient by applying this formula. So we take chi squared divided by itself plus number of observations. And after this, we just take the square root out of the result. Well, if we insert our values, so we have 8.42 divided by 8.42 plus 197. And the result, taking the square root out of, we get a contingency coefficient of 0 0.2025. Okay, this takes care of the amount of observations, but this does not take care of the size of the contingency table. Why is size of contingency table important? Well, imagine if you have a very large contingency table, you have more terms in your chi-squared statistic. We mentioned this one slide before. And well, if you add up more terms, there's a higher potential for getting a larger chi-squared statistic. So we need to, in some way, take care that the size of the contingency table is also accounted for. We do this by correcting our contingency coefficient. How do we correct this? First off, we take a look, which is the smaller one, the number of columns or the number of rows? Well, obviously, in our example, they are both of the same size, so it doesn't matter, so they are both of a value of 2. So 2 is our correction factor, which we use in the following way. So we calculate 2 divided by 2 minus 1, so we have 2. And from this, taking the square root, so we have the square root of 2, times the contingency coefficient, giving us the corrected contingency coefficient. And if we do this for our numbers, we get as a result value of 0 0.2863. Well, what does this value mean? We now have a standardized normalized coefficient statistic, meaning it takes values between 0 and 1. And in this context, 0 0.2863 is rather small. So we can say, yeah, there might be a 
somewhat relation association between the two variables but this relation won't be so strong we can't actually say whether there is a significant uh, relation between the two uh, significant association because for this we would need a test and that's only part of the statistics 2 lection and more or less exercise set but here we already see well there is some association but not this strong and well this already then concludes this exercise i hope all of you enjoyed listening to it and learned something from it so until next time see you and goodbye